today's spookerific review, we're going to be having a look at McFarlane Toys McFarlane Monster Series 3, The Six Faces of Madness, Attila the Hun. Infamous leader of the bloodthirsty Huns, 5th century inhabitants in modern-day Hungary who led devastating plundering raids into Western Europe. Known as the Scourge of God, Attila led a vast and merciless mounted army which left a swath of devastation and death across much of Europe. Attila is said to have died of nasal hemorrhage on his wedding night. The third series of McFarlane Monsters action figure line focuses on the past, a historical look back at some of the human race's most notorious bloodletters and miscreants, incredibly detailed and fully accessorized. To measure Attila, I sort of have to cheat, as he doesn't have the means to stand on his own. So we're gonna go ahead and take the tape measure from the top of the makeshift base that I've got him on currently. And we'll take it right to the very top of the spike of his helmet. Brings the figure at around a surprisingly 6.2 inches. I mean, looking at him, I would have thought he was smaller than that. However, switching that over to centimeters, the figure stands at 15.8. Why don't we first have a look at the display base that comes included with the figure. Maybe then after that, I'll attach him to the tops here. What you are looking at is a grotesque sight, a display base, if you will, made up of human heads. These are the fallen, and as you can see, based on their various different helmets, these are the multitude of different armies that Attila had faced. And as you can see, all of which have fallen and has created this rather grotesque, like I said, display base featuring all these human heads. It's hard to decipher one from the other. It's sort of from a distance looks like one just big blob of stuff. However, when you look really closely, you can make out little small details here. Each of the intricate little faces, you can almost even see how they have died. A few little gashes in their faces. One poor chap has a gash running right through his chin all the way up to his nose. Despite all of this, the busy nature of this display base, there are pegs. There's a peg right there. You see it? It's right there. And then there's a base, a little peg that's concealed behind the head of this one gentleman. This head, if you will, if I can flip it just around here, is on almost a separate peg. And there's a reasoning for that. I'll show you that in a second. But there's the display base that comes included with Attila the Hun weapons for him and of course he's going to have some decently cool looking weapons and very violent weapons as well he comes with this bladed axe it almost looks like a cleaver that's been forged out to be on something that you can hold by like two hands like a handle kind of i guess similar to like an axe the blood has been very generously sprinkled across the blade there the blade is not sharp, just in case you are wondering, but it does look, as you can see it, hopefully, it's almost got a bird edge to it. It's not completely a, a clean blade. It's almost got like little rough areas to it. The handle is nicely casted here in probably like a black plastic, and then they've painted the middle areas and the sides of areas in the black or dark brown, and then like a medium brown in the middle there. Moving along. This is this one's kind of neat. He comes with this double blade. I'm assuming he would hold it like this, and then he would basically just impale from both ends. What's interesting about the blades, though, is that they have a serrated blade to them. So both entry and exiting of the blade would cause some serious damage to organs 
and the flesh of whoever he was fighting. It is really nicely detailed. It's not the easiest thing to get into his hand, but at the very least, it's a nice looking side weapon for him. Probably not display him with this. And then he comes with this. Now, I'm not sure the actual terming for the term for this handled blade is. It's almost like a sickle or a small scythe. It's definitely a curved blade, good for hooking. And you could clearly take a head right off, probably what he's used for the majority of the kills here. And then the mid area of the blade, before we get to the handle portion, has some serrated teeth there as well. It's just been blanketed with blood. Nice looking handle on it, blood all over the handle as well. And those are his two weapons, or three weapons if you count the, the actual double bladed, uh, I guess it's kind of like a knife or a dagger. Let's go ahead and take the display base. We'll just move that out of the way because it doesn't come with the figure. We'll look at Attila, then we'll put, try our best to put the accessories into his hand, and then try our best on top of that to try to put him on the display base. Clearly, this is one of those figures, much like many, really, of the Six Faces of Madness, one of those McFarlane toys that really requires, first of all, a display base, and second of all, requires very little motion and moving on your part to get the figure right. McFarlane has basically just said to you, this is how the figure is going to pose. And I suppose there are little areas in which you can move the figure, like legs, for example, if I just lift up his loin skirt, his legs look like they're just molded. You're not going to get anything happening right there. At the very least, he does have a swivel on one of his arms, and this arm doesn't have a swivel, but he does have a swivel right here, uh, swiveling in the hands. And uh, he also has it in the head. That You can see there's the cut right there in which he would be able to swivel the head. But everything, as it usually goes, when you are moving, swiveling the head, for example, it's going to look awkward. Like, you would never display the figure like this. Maybe you would, I don't know. But I would display the figure just looking this way, as really he is intended. Face sculpt from at least McFarlane's interpretation of what Attila the Hun looks like, I think is really good. I love the head sculpt on him. He's got a braided or two braids of hair that are jetting out from underneath his helmet and they're draping their way. This one sticks out a little further. This one drapes across its shoulder. Love the headdress of his helmet, a smaller skull and then the horns sticking out from there. And then he's got one notable point that sticks out from the top of his helmet. I mean, even like looking at it, it looks as if there's blood on it. Makes me think almost as if Attila went at, to the extent of almost battering, ramming the some of his, his combatants, which has caused the blood to trickle down from the blade, this spike, onto his helmet. Because you can really see that there is some additional blood that's added there. To think that somebody would have forged all this, you have the rivets, the way that it's been kind of brought and molded together. These, I don't know if they're supposed to be metal. Of course, on the figure, they're softer plastic. I think these are just these probably metal flaps that are coming down. They could also have been leather flaps coming down. And he's got the same similar treatment with like a tail on the back of his helmet, just a covering on the back of his helmet which even on its own is adorned with all this nice deco, almost sort of a wave effect that's been running across it. Makes me think further that it's actually more of a leather material than it is a metal material. These would just be like flaps that are coming down over his face. You can move them slightly. I wouldn't gamble too much at moving them too much because of course this could warp them and or break them right off. Good head sculpt though, very happy with it. Blood very generously splattered. Splattered is a word I seem to use quite a lot when reviewing McFarlane toys. No coincidence, I'm, I'm certain of that. He's got blood all over his hands, blood all over his one arm, right across the shoulder. You can almost see in which he would have hit somebody with one of his weapons, and the blood would have just splashed its way from the torso all the way across to his arm here. A similar ram horn has been made out onto his front torso area here. These almost look like the side bones here look like the bones that are at the top of your your waist. 
could be those could be shoulder blades as well and he's got the like i said the ram horn in the middle of that he's clearly somebody based on his design somebody that keeps trophies and the more trophies he adorns his armor with the more powerful i guess he feels he is he's even got like a little spinal cord running down the back it doesn't look like a human spinal cord though it looks actually more like an animal probably maybe to the same animal that he got a lot of these bones from here and the and the skull here as well one thing i like is that the blood is wet not wet to the touch, but at looking at it at the very least, it looks like it's wet rather than a matte finish. So it does look like it's wet. It's It has just recently touched his skin and has stayed there while he continues to battle his way through the armies. Fur cuffed boots. And he's got some strappings there around his boots section as well. And of course the peg holes will play a big role in a second. Love the fur skirt. Slightly a softer plastic, slightly a softer plastic on the back there as well. He's got this one little hook that looking at it, it almost, I almost feel as if I could fit this on here. I suppose if, if I work a little bit enough at it, I haven't tried it myself, just pry those away, take the blade and just drape it. I wonder if I could actually get it in between both. Again, not something I've tried yet, keeping it for the review. Hey, there we go. Got it right in place. It's sort of in the way though. Maybe not, not how it's supposed to look, but at the very least we'll go with that for the time being. So at least there's a little storage area there for, for the double bladed dagger. Okay, so let's go ahead. Like we've already kind of looked at his articulation. Let's go ahead and plug this guy into place into this morbidly grotesque display base. Kind of almost looks like a bushel of grapes. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and uh, I find the easiest is to move the one head out of the way because his foot sort of has to tuck underneath the helmet. Let me just show you what I mean by that. You got to plug that into place. First of all, finding the peg hole. And you sort of just have to wiggle it until you got the right fitting. I'll leave the blade off for a second. Just fell off, but we'll just leave it off for, this, for the time being. Like I said, you just plug that into place. It's not a really enough flat footing, I have to admit. And then we can go ahead and stretch the other foot around and then plug that into place. This foot fits a lot easier, gives you a much firmer footing than the one that over, that's over here. But as you can see, this one skull, this one severed head, sticks out really the crowd of bloodied, uh, de decapitated heads. This one sticks out a little bit further, both physically and paint-wise. And you can see the head just sits right on top of Attila's foot there. Kind of gives you a little bit of extra depth going on there. Now you can go ahead and take the blades. I use this one over here. I think the packaging also shows him holding this blade on this one hand, like that. And then this one... Let's say you don't want to use this blade. Let's say you want to use this scythe sword or whatever it would be actually called. You could technically fit it into his hand, but it's one of those instances, again, where you have to pry the fingers away from one another. Um, ironically enough, the back of the package, what they did was they just took the hook, this part right here. It's almost like a beak of a bird. Just attaches like that. And they sort of just wedged it in between his fingers, almost as if he's claiming his territory by sticking down a flag, or in this case, a sword. And then you have the other sword sticking out right there. You can then flip the figure around. Once again, go back and see if we can get the blade back in there. There we go. And you've got yourself a fully armorized, fully weaponized Attila the Hun. Again, this is one of those instances where these figures really aren't intended to be posed. I mean, you can move the arm up, you can rotate the head, but both of which are going to look awkward on him. He's not a figure that stands on his own, but really by benefiting by giving him the extra bonus of this neat looking display base, though grotesque, yes, uh, does give Attila Hun a right, really nice statued presence. Yes, I said statue and not really an action figure.
Once again, thank you to the folks over at McFarland Toys for reminding us of the horrific characters that made up our human history. Attila the Hun would slaughter the masses by thousands, and then, ironically enough, not fall to his opponents, but fall to a nasal hemorrhage on his wedding night. So it just goes to show. I really do like the detailing that they put into this figure in the category of blood. I would rate rank this one rather high for the amount of dosage of the red stuff that they put all over the figure's legs, his arms, and of course across this rather adorned display base of human heads. Even the display base, you could spend a lot of time looking at it as McFarland, uh, McFarland Toys put so much care and detail, if you can call it that, into all the individual severed heads that make up Attila the Hun's display base. This is certainly one of those figures that isn't going to be able to stand on his own. Once you get him on a base like this, this is how he's going to look until the end of time. A nice looking pickup and certainly a nice additional piece to the already the already mad characters of the six faces of madness that we've looked at thus far. We're still going to, of course, have a look at a couple more over the month of Spottober. So if you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, what are what exactly are you waiting for? Like I said, we're going to have a look at the rest of the six faces of madness from McFarland Toys. I've also got one other time permitting of course i've got one other mcfarland lineup usually i only do one a year but i thought this year we'll do something a little bit different we'll do two lineups from mcfarland toys so the second lineup will be probably coming to you mid-month so if anybody has any guesses as to what the other mcfarland lineup we're going to have a look at during the month of spot tower let me know down below in the meantime today we were having a look at the mcfarland Ma monsters series three the six faces of madness this was attila the hun Certainly more videos, guys, like I said, will be coming your way during the month of Spotover. We're going to have a look at a whole bunch of spooky stuff. And don't worry, don't worry. If that isn't your thing and you want to have a look at some other superhero stuff and you hope that I'm going to cover some something not just all horror related, there's going to be lots of other videos coming your way as well. I like to try to sprinkle as best I can both horror and regular videos over the month of October. So if you are already really psyched for horror stuff, don't worry, there's going to be a lot more coming your way. Not so much feeling the horror. That's okay. We're going to have some other stuff coming on this channel in the next couple of days as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. And I'll see you next time.